In this problem, I'll talk about a ball that is dropped from a height. So we have a ball here, and this ball is dropped from the height, which is five meter, and the ball does not bounce back. It just stays here, or it, it, it just, let's say, a ball or a bucket. In this case, it's a bucket, and it doesn't bounce back. So now we need to find out what is the velocity of the bucket just before it hits the ground and what is the change in the momentum of the bucket after it hits the ground and how much impulse the bucket imparts to the ground or how much impulse the ground imparts to the bucket. So we'll be calculating in this problem. And in order to solve the problem, we're going to use conservation of energy and the impulse momentum theorem. Let's start. So we, we are given the height from which the ball is dropped, which is five meter. If you look at this point here, right at this point, the ball has only the gravitational potential energy, which is mgh. It does not have any kinetic energy, which is zero. So total energy at this point is equal to mgh. And now, oops, at this point B, it has only the kinetic energy, which is equal to half mv squared. The gravitational potential energy at point B is equal to zero. So the total energy or total mechanical energy, I would say, is half mv squared. So I'm going to use the conservation of energy. Total energy at point A must be equal to total energy at point B. Or in other words, the total energy at point A is entirely the gravitational potential energy and total energy at point B is entirely the kinetic energy. So that's what it says here. Potential energy at point A is exactly equal to the kinetic energy at point B, which is here. And the potential energy is mgh and the kinetic energy at this point is half mv squared. So the mass and the mass cancels out. So it doesn't matter whether you drop a bucket or a ball or a stone or a rock. All the objects will have exactly the same velocity if it is dropped from the same height. And the velocity at point B is now square root of 2gh. We know two, the 2 is a constant, g value is 9.8 and h is 5. So the velocity will be... 9.9 .9 meter per second so this is the velocity now the momentum just before it hits the ground or at point b is simply equal to the mass times velocity that's the momentum the mass is two kilogram again and the velocity we just calculated is 9.9 .9. if you multiply them together you will get 19.8 and the unit will be kilogram meter per second. That's the momentum. And the if you are interested in finding out the direction of the momentum, the direction will be the downward because the velocity is the downward. Once the once the bucket hits the ground, it does not bounce back. So the final momentum of the bucket is or the velocity is zero because it doesn't bounce back that's what he's saying here as the bucket does not bounce back the vf is zero what is vf that's the velocity the final velocity is equal to zero so the velocity is zero so it's just momentum the momentum is the, we denote momentum by p and it is defined at mass times velocity so if the velocity is zero, the momentum will also be zero. So now let's find out the change in momentum. The change in momentum is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. 
and we just calculated the final momentum is zero and the initial momentum we have is right here 19.8 so it just when it hits the ground just before it hits the ground and it doesn't bounce back so just before it hits the ground is its initial momentum and after it hits the ground is the final momentum which is zero and we're just taking only the magnitude not the exact value and i'll tell you why so this change in momentum is now 19.8 which is exactly the same as we calculated before and the impulse is that's for now where we're going to use the impulse momentum theorem this is coming from the impulse momentum theorem and what it says is the impulse is exactly equal to the change in momentum so the impulse now is equal to change in momentum and we have already calculated change in momentum to be 19.8 so this is now your impulse so what's the significance of impulse why do we calculate impulse and i will talk about it in my next video by using the impulse or or in other words by by calculating the change in momentum we can calculate how much force it imparts to the ground or how much force the ground imparts to the ball we'll be doing this one in my next video and now coming back to the negative sign here what's the negative and positive sign means so the positive sign means the how much how what is the change in momentum imparted by the ball to the ground that's the positive value and the negative sign would simply mean the what is the change in momentum imparted by the ground to the ball so in other words the so we, when we calculate the force then the ball imparts the force to the ground and the ground imparts the and the ground imparts the force to the ball so one is positive and the other is negative so this is it for this impulse momentum theorem and the conservation of energy again if you have any questions write down your questions in the comment section below and do not forget to like share and subscribe the channel thank you very much